Hello, welcome to a special episode of Building Blocks, where we deal with one of the biggest building blocks in songwriting for me, and that's Guitar Tutor. This program is written by me and has been in development for the best part of 30 years. Um, originally started as a fast basic program on the Atari 520 um, in around 1990. I can't exactly remember, but I think it started around then. So I'm going to take you through it today, hopefully convince you that it's great and that you want a copy, and then shepherd you over to my website, onemanandhissongs.com, where you can download a copy of this program absolutely free. All I ask in return is that you subscribe to my YouTube channel, uh, click notifications to find out when I get uh, when I release new new content, and I think that's that's a fair deal for all. So let's get straight into it. I'll show you I'll show you what the tool can do. First of all, let's deal with this this stuff on the right hand side of the window. And at the top of the screen, we have the scale fretboard. Oh, just a quick note on on when when I said fretboard, it's not just a, a guitar tutor program, even though that's what it's called. Everything that I'm going to describe works for keyboard mode as well. So if you're a keyboard player and you're interested in any of this stuff, just basically translate all of that information across. Everything works, uh, almost everything works in both modes. I think the keyboard mode has slightly more functionality than the, than the guitars. But anyway, let's deal with this for now. So this is um, a chord fretboard. And at the moment, it's showing you how to play the chord of C major. And most people who play music will know that C major is made of a C, an E, and a G. And that's the root, the third, and the perfect fifth. But you could play any chord that you want using this tool. So if you want to be able to play an A, we click A. And now it shows you how to play an A. Um, obviously, there's the various chords. Down here, we have a drop-down box with most chords that you're normally going to be interested in playing. So there's a D flat major seven, and this contains four notes. And you can see that now it's representing a fourth note on the fretboard. So let's have a quick look. The D flat is the root, and they're all in red. Root notes are always in red. Then we have an F, which is in orange, and you can see every F on the fretboard all the way up. There's the A flat, which is the yellow note, and the C is finally the major seventh, and that's in green. So what it's really doing is it's showing you wherever you are on the fretboard, these are all the combinations of notes that you could play in order to make that chord. If we pick a very straightforward chord for a, from a guitarist perspective, E major, one of the most common chords that a guitarist will play. And most guitarists will play it down here, fretting those three notes and playing the rest open strings. And you can see that that shape is there. There's another very common one by putting your index finger on the seventh fret as a bar and then playing these three notes here. But you're not restricted. As long as you're picking a red note and an orange note and a yellow note, then you're going to be making a full E major chord wherever it may be. It could be these three notes over here or that, that note and that note and maybe that note skipping a string. You know, it really doesn't matter. It's entirely up to you where you play the notes. And that's the big thing about Guitar Tutor. It doesn't corral you down a particular alley. It doesn't deal with inversions because that's a specific set of notes um, played in a specific laid out format. Um, it gives you options. It says this is the entire fretboard and these are all the different locations on the fretboard where you can play this chord. We also have substitutions that we can add to the chord. So if we want to play something a little bit more exotic than a regular E major, we can add variations. So that becomes an E suspended fourth. Um, and then we can add additional notes. On. So if you want to add a, a flat 13, we can. And it's always up updating this text display down here to tell you what the notes are called, but also updating the chord map above to show you how and where to play those notes. Right, just below the chord fretboard, we have the scale fretboard. So this, unsurprisingly, um, shows you all the notes in a given scale. So at the moment, Guitar Tutor is representing the C major scale. 
and if we check out the fretboard there's the C which is the root note all the other notes are, are monochrome they're all sky blue and that's to prevent making the fretboard too busy if I start representing seven or eight notes in different colors it, it's just too much it's not helpful so I found that it was actually better to just stick to two two colors so there's the root and then we can go C D E F G A B C D E F all the way up and there's a standard pattern that many guitarists will have practiced over and over again when you're diligently trying to learn your scales and you can see all the, the various other patterns starting to emerge from the fretboard as you kind of shift your perspective across different parts of the fretboard but the, the bottom line is guitar tutor absolutely does not care how you play that scale it's just showing you all the notes in addition to um, graphically representing them on the on the fretboard it's also giving you a text display down here and it's also showing you the notes that aren't in scale from a context perspective so now we can see the size of the intervals that we're jumping to get from one note to another and that can be really useful I find looking at this immensely helpful and it's not a view that you see very often but I think it's I think it's a good one down here I have what's called the chord map and this allows you to update the chord fretboard up at the top of the screen very easily with predetermined chords that have been that have been extracted from the currently selected scale it's quite a big sentence let's just click a button and see what happens if I click E minus 7 then the chord fretboard up above now represents an E minus 7 and here are all the notes of the E minus 7 every box I click down here displays that chord up there and we've got triad chords seventh chords and ninth chords so all of these chords over here are going to have five notes because we've got the standard first third fifth then we've added a seventh to get that chord and then we've added the ninth and then we get that chord these chords themselves have been extracted from this scale so if I change to D major all of these chords now update so these two fretboards are really working quite closely in harmony with each other this is giving you the entire scale this is giving you any single chord at any given time regardless of whether it's in scale you can pick any any chord that you want it's got you know you don't have to pick a chord from this scale but if you do want the chords in the scale this is where you get them in the chord map at the bottom of the screen and you just click any of these boxes and the chord scale the fretboard above immediately updates to reflect the, the selected scale and then from there you, you can add variations or whatever you want a quick note about variations and the number of notes we max out at six this was fundamentally designed in its early days to be a guitar tutor that's why it's called guitar tutor it was written purely from that perspective and there are six strings on my guitar you know I, I wrote it for the guitar that I owned I've never owned a seven string guitar and so I, I currently max out at six okay let's just examine a few more features of the scale fretboard so in addition to playing regular chords every, every scales sorry everything that we've seen so far has been a major scale but it doesn't have to be this box over here gives you all the modes of the currently selected scale so if we want to play a phrygian scale we're now playing c major phrygian or c phrygian which is a mode of the major scale now every diatonic scale diatonic means seven notes has seven modes so those are the seven modes of the major scale but if we switch to the harmonic minor scale now we've got seven new modes so we have all of these lovely scales so the first four are diatonic um, is Neapolitan yeah the Neapolitan sorry is a diatonic scale but then we go into some scales that aren't so if you're playing the the blue scale for instance there's no concept of modes in the minor blue scale it's a complete law unto its own in, in its own right don't even get me started on the blue scale it tilts me 
Um, and we'll have to do a building blocks episode on it one day about how it just takes all of the rule books and throws them out the window after stomping on them and tearing them up and chewing them a bit. So anyway, let's let's get back to our nice, comfortable diatonic territory. So that's everything for the most part that you're going to be interested in on the main viewer. All of these, everything in this section of the, the, the program is visible all the time, regardless of whether you're in guitar mode or keyboard mode. Let's just switch over very quickly. And when I'm clicking on these chords, you can see all of the same functionality exists. It's just represented differently. Let's have a look at the chord builder. And it does exactly what it suggests. When we enable the chord builder, all of the notes on the chord fretboard disappear because now it's waiting for us to click on the fretboard. And this was my original idea 30 years ago. This is why I started writing the Guitar Tutor. I wanted to be able to say, click that note and that note and that note and that note. Tell me what I'm playing, Guitar Tutor. You know, what, what chord is that? Well, it could be one of 12 different chords because there are 12 different notes of the chromatic scale. And essentially, every chord can be defined using any one of those notes. And so Chord Builder doesn't really try to be too intelligent about what chord it is you might be playing. It shows you all 12. And here they are. So you can see that E minor 6 is a strong candidate. It could be an A9 if we add an A. And so you might think, well, it can't possibly be an A9. You're not playing A. I am now. You know, it's that's what Guitar Tutor's saying, you're close. You're not there yet. You know, you, you're not playing a root. So you're not allowed to call yourself an A9 until you play an A. But if you do then there you go. Now we're playing an A9. And the other chords are starting to become more obscure. So that lovely, comfortable E minor 6 that we had earlier has now become an E minor 6 add 11. Still okay, you know, that's a chord you're allowed to play. But if we were looking to name a chord and do it as simply as possible, we'd probably tend towards calling it an A9 at this point. Take that away. And so you can see all of the other different chord variations and some of them are already beyond unreasonable. So it's not a G sharp with no root minor major 7 add 11 augmented 5th. Stop it. You know, behave yourself. It's not that chord. It's not a flavour of G sharp. It's something else. And so we start being a little bit sensible. We use our eyes and we look at the thing and we say, well, what could it be? C sharp minor 7 flat 5, that's a very common chord. That's one of the chords that are represented by the major scale. We just nip very briefly over to the major scale again. Um, somewhere down here, we're going to have, there it is, a B minor 7 flat 5. This is really level 1 chord construction when you're dealing with a major scale and the Ionian mode of the major scale is as simple as it gets. So it would be totally acceptable to call it a D flat minus seven flat uh, five. That's, that's completely fine. Some people call it a half diminished, D flat half diminished. And so as we add notes into this chord map, then this thing becomes increasingly complex as we go. We can take notes away. We can click notes wherever on the fretboard we want. But you have to bear in mind that this is a physical tool. It's helping you. It's trying to help you to actually play the guitar. So it's going to get to a stage where, you know, it's becoming difficult to actually fret these. The, the notes are getting too far away for you to reasonably be able to play these chords. And so we're constantly looking to be sensible. You see how when I click on any note, it doesn't let me choose two notes on the same um, string because I, I'm not Stanley Jordan. But it, it's all about being practical and trying to say, well, what are you trying to do? Or, or what information are you trying to get out of, the, out of this exercise? If that chord sounds nice, brilliant. It doesn't matter what it's called. But if you're interested in knowing what it's called, here are some suggestions. Now then, it's all very well and good knowing what chord we're playing, but that doesn't make 
much musical sense until we place it in a scale, in the context of a scale. And this is where Keyfinder comes in. And in order to show you how that works, I'll just plug these four notes up here that we're playing on the guitar randomly without knowing what they are or what scale we're in. Let's put them over here. So we've got a G, got a D flat or C sharp, an E and a B. And now you see a list of all the scales for every key in which those four notes appear. And we can pick any of these and they'll all be correct. They'll all work. But for the sake of this example, we'll take the one from the top of the list. E major Dorian. Okay, so let's let's plug that into the scale fretboard. E major Dorian. And now you see these four notes up here that we were playing on the guitar are mirrored in the scale fretboard plus many other notes and now we can play any of these notes and in terms of playing chords on the guitar we might want to bar this entire fifth fret well we can do that if we click those two notes there because they're in scale and if we go back over to chord builder we'll see that we're now playing an a11 or an e minor 13 and you can also see that it's absolutely physically viable. You bar that fifth fret, those two notes, easy to reach, and that is a playable chord that most people would have no difficulty at all playing. And it's an E minor 13 and a lovely exotic chord or a D major 13 or whatever you want to call it. We turn chord builder off again. Now, down here, we have all the standard chords, the triads, the sevenths and the ninths of the E Dorian scale. And we can click in any of these boxes and we're now seeing a G major nine and there's a C sharp minus seven flat five flat nine. Lovely, very nice. C sharp diminished. Every time we click in one of these boxes, we get this chord. And this is, this is real music now. If we say, okay, we're playing in E Dorian, so we're going to start hammering out an E minor and that's that's where we start from. And then we go up to an A7 and that's going to sound nice. And then we might go down to a, a G major 9 and these are all going to sound lovely. And Guitar Tutor is constantly telling us, don't worry about learning how to play a G major 9 on the on the, the guitar. I'll have it right here. You know, once you've learned these these chords for the song that you're writing, then you're up and running. Let's be musical. Let's be creative rather than spending, I don't want to hate on, on practice. You know, obviously I didn't go down the route of learning all of my scales and learning the fretboard comprehensively and respect to anybody who does. It's not how my brain works. It doesn't stick. I have really great difficulty learning that stuff. And these days I, I just use Guitar Tutor instead. I'll load this up, whatever key that I've decided I'm playing in, I've got it visible. Um, in front of me and I have it on my second screen and while I'm writing music in Cubase I can glance across and I can see all of the notes that I'm supposed to be playing in in the, the key and then for any given chord that I want to play I'll just click it and then it gives me a very quick illustration of um, where on the fretboard you know it's totally contextual do I want the the deep open ringing sound or the the the, the more muted kind of um, effect that you get higher up on the fretboard so it's all entirely up to you. And so you can see we're, we're, we're very often toggling back between the chord builder and the key finder um, using these two things um, very much in partnership. So from key finder, having decided that we're in E Dorian, we now have all of these notes. We could go back over to chord builder, turn chord builder on and say, well, what happens if I click? Let me just reset blanks the fretboard. Let's say if I want to click this F sharp down here and that B and maybe that E and let's try that. Oh, we don't want another B. Yeah, let's play that A up there. What is that? What chord is it that I'm playing? Well, there you are. It's one of those. Have a look, see which one's most sensible. It could be a seven sus four. That's absolutely fine. Totally normal chord. Six sus two. That's fine. 
you know, but it's really completely up to us. In the key finder up here, this, this known key box, if we drop that down, because we know we're in the key of E, it just throws away a lot of the other stuff. If we hadn't decided that we were in Dorian, or maybe when we get to the chorus, we want a different variant of, of E. We want to stay in E, and we want it to, maybe we're, we're, we're thudding out a, like a, a, a single note bass line that's, or a synth kind of thing that's, that's rooting us in E, but we want to add a new texture to the sound and we want to move out of Dorian. Well, that's absolutely fine. This gives us all of the options based on, let's say those original four notes that we played. Let's go back to, they were ding, ding and ding. So, you know, those were the four notes that we were playing originally. So now let's say, well, for the chorus, let's try switching to Spanish Phrygian. Well, what, what's that going to give us? Um, e, that's an E harmonic minor, Spanish Phrygian. There we are. And now we've still got those four notes. So we could be pedaling over that chord and use that as some kind of connecting bridge into the chorus that that's still playing. And so we have that commonality of, of the approach of those four notes are going to carry you through between the between the verse and the chorus but now we've got other notes around it that are going to help um, supply that that kind of creativity so yeah these are all the chords that we ha we had to choose from but now we have new other notes that we can play so we can't we can't bar across the fifth fret anymore because we've lost the a but we can still play the D if we wanted, and that's still absolutely fine. So that, that five note chord is available to us. It's always up to you how you use this information, how you evolve it. But the ability to say, I'm going to center myself around this collection of notes, this cluster of notes. This is the core concept for me. Now give me all the options available to me within that framework. And that I find that to be really inspiring. So that's Key Finder and Chord Builder really tied together as a, as a team, as a partnership. So this was part one of the tutorial. In part two, we'll deal with essentially all of the other functionality um, inside Guitar, Guitar Tutor, in, including the uh, reasonably terrifying ARP mode, which I'm going to have to read up on before I even talk about because it's, it's a little bit headbending. But musically awesome. Uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to, to telling you about that that functionality. So if you've enjoyed this, this, uh, this video, please subscribe to my channel, hit notifications, and join me for part two where we talk about the Guitar Tutor a little bit more. Thanks very much for watching.